He has a lot of hard drives of a different capacity. I'm going to take a look at four different methods to put this into one drive so it can be accessed as a single share with single parity so any of the drives can fail and continue operation. This lets you use a lot of old drives and get the full capacity out of them, but it does have compromises compared to traditional RAID. And I'm going to be taking a look at the different compromises all of these solutions have. The four different storage solutions that I'm going to be comparing, running benchmarks on, and running other little tests to look at the different features of are Unraid, BTRFS, Storage Spaces in Windows, and Snap RAID plus MergerFS or Drive Pool in Windows. I'm going to be primarily looking at the single parity setup. While Mirror is a lot better when it comes to redundancy and speed and many other factors, if you're trying to get old drives you can together of a various size, you're likely low on resources and want to be able to get the most you can out of those drives. And Parity gives you the most space while still having some level of redundancy. See. While single parity has its limitations in terms of getting data back and those many possible situations where you might not be able to get your data back with a single parity drive, it is still much more likely that you'll get your data back with a single parity compared to having no parity drive and one copy of every bit of data. I'm going to first take a look at Unraid, which is a Linux-based operating system built for NAS and home server usage. It has a lot of great functionality and easy to set up things like Docker images, VMs, and other features, but it also has a storage system that works quite well that's built in and integrated with the OS. It does things like drive spin down very well. It allows you to have just the parity drive and the one drive you're writing to spun up at a single time and still have full parity data. It will read the data, modify it, and then write again, which will have a penalty and speed, but it means you can have all the other drives spun down, saving power and making less noise. With Unraid, it's very easy to add an additional drive to the pool. It's easy to replace a drive if one fails in the pool. And removing the drive is a little bit more of a pain because you have to manually copy the data from it as they don't have a way to do that in the GUI, but it's definitely possible. Under the hood, Unraid uses a Linux file system on all the different drives in the pool. So you could just take these drives and put them in another Linux system, mount them, and it has all that chunk of data on it readable. So if you only have one data drive and the rest failed, you'd still have some of your data. It seems to be combining this with some sort of file system that merges it internally. I'm not exactly sure. It's likely somewhat custom. And then it's using a very customized version of Linux MD to make a file level parity. So the parity drive has that extra parity of all the other drives. So if one of those drives were to fail, it can recover the data on those drives. The parity is also being calculated in real time, which means if a drive fails at any moment, you'll still be able to recover the data. BRFS is a newer Linux file system that has a lot of great features. Things like checksumming, copy on write, and RAID for if multiple drives are being used. RAID is the feature I'm the most interested in here, and I'm going to be using that with its ability to do RAID 5 and 6, or parity RAID, to take a look at its ability to use mixed drives capacities. Because unlike other RAID solutions that have a fixed number of drives in size, if one drive is smaller than the other drives in the set, it'll just make another stripe that's slightly less wide and use the existing drives and keep doing that until those, all the drives are full of data. And that way you can get essentially the full capacity out of all the different size drives that you have. Another great feature of BTRFS is it's very good at adding and removing drives that are arbitrary. So if I just want to remove a drive from the array, It'll remove the drive and then write the data that was on this drive onto the empty space on the other drives. And that way I can easily like add a drive later on, run a rebalance command, and it's laid out in all of its correct fashion on the new disks. And it's super flexible. You can easily add and remove disks as you want with whatever size disks you want. But there's one big issue of BTRFS, and that's its major warning with RAID 5 and 6, as there's a lot of functionality that just isn't right under the hood and it's not recommended for production use. I still wanted to include it though because I believe all these features are super neat and I'm still hoping that it gets fixed. Though unfortunately this issue has been here for a while now with no major fixes recently. SnapRaid and MergerFS is a combination of two pieces of software that when working together provide a single large volume with parity. parity. MergerFS will take multiple drives, each with their own file system and merge them together into one large volume. If you're on Windows, you can use DrivePool for essentially the same functionality. Then there's SnapRaid, which is a piece of software that takes multiple file systems, in this case, the file systems on each of these disks, and then makes a parity drive or up to six parity drives of the data. So that if any of these drives are lost, you can use the parity drive to put the correct data on a replacement disk. 
One downside of this solution is that there's two pieces of software that you have to configure to work together. There's no easy way to make it so it's all set up in one interface, like how BTFS or Unraid or storage spaces can all do. So you have a little bit more configuration and making sure that both of the software is set up correctly to be able to get the full functionality of a single large volume and parity. One disadvantage of SnapRaid is it's not real time. So if a piece of data is touched on a disk, it does not automatically update the parity. You have to run SnapRaid sync to read all the data changes and then update the parity. And that means if the SnapRaid sync has not yet been run and another drive fails, you do have the possibility of losing data. SnapRaid is generally recommended for data that does not change super often for this reason. But SnapRaid offers a lot of flexibility with it being easy to add another drive, replace drives, and you can remove drives by copying data from existing drives to larger disks. And then you can just run a SnapRaid sync to make sure all the parity data is updated. Also, SnapRaid allows for up to six parity drives, so you could reasonably do massive arrays if you really want to, much larger than most of these other solutions that only allow up to two parity drives. I have an older video going of how to set up SnapRaid and MergerFS that I'm going to link up here if you want to learn more about how you can set this solution up. Storage Spaces is a new way of managing disks that Microsoft added as a part of Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012 and has been enhanced a little bit in Windows 10, Windows 11, and newer versions of Windows Server. And it works a good amount differently compared to most other RAID solutions because when you put the drives together into a storage pool, you don't set the RAID level then. You set the RAID level when you make a virtual disk on top of the storage pool. And the virtual disk can assign multiple drives, normally it's number of columns, at a time, and it just picks the drives with available space to write it onto. And since maybe you're only writing to three different drives at a time, so with parity, that would be two data drives and one parity, I keep filling up on different drives until those all the drives are full. So if you have a drive of lower capacity, it'll write a little bit of data to it, and then once it's full, it is essentially kind of removed from the available drives to write on in the pool, and other drives will have their data written to. It generally works quite well for mixing drives of different capacities and getting near the maximum amount of data that you can store in those drives. One quick tip if you are using parity in storage bases is the interleave size and the NTFS cluster size have to be aligned. So what you want to do is you want to add up the size of data. So typically that's the number of columns in parity, subtract one, and multiply the interlace size of all those drives together. So if I had a number of columns set to five, that means I have four data disks. I set the interleave size to 64 kilobytes. So a full data stripe width is 256 kilobytes. I want to set that as my NTFS cluster size and the write performance is much better because every time you make a write, it updates a whole one instead of up editing an existing cluster. And that's where a lot of the performance issues with storage spaces and slow writes comes from. But one issue with this is this is very poorly documented. Microsoft in their own documents doesn't talk about it very much, and there is some other resources that talks about it, but it's still relatively limited. And the GUI, which I'm guessing a lot of users use or start with, does not expose any of these settings and does not say that you should be setting it up this way to get the most out of your system. So a lot of times users will see 40 megabytes per second, even though you typically can get 100 plus if you optimize it correctly. And I find if you optimize it correctly, its performance is sufficient for a lot of home use and likely similar to at least one drive's write speed, which just puts it on par with Unraid or other systems. Storage basis is also fairly flexible when it comes to adding disks and changing disks, where you can arbitrarily add disks of different sizes. Unfortunately, you can't remove disks and make your virtual disk smaller because an existing virtual disk cannot be shrunk once it's made. I find that storage spaces can work fairly well, but you need to do a lot of testing and configuration to get the most out of that system. And I find that a lot more annoying than most of the other file systems, which gets you nearly as good with a much simpler configuration and much better documentation of how to get the most out of it. And the default configuration is much closer to the max performance that it can. In order to test the performance, I created a little script that would copy a one gigabyte file 200 times my test client VM to a VM running this given storage solution over an SMB network solution. This is a relatively real world situation for me in a NAS use case writing data, but your results may vary with different workloads. And here's the results that I got. BTFS was the fastest as it was relatively good at writing at multiple disks at the same time, storage spaces being a bit worse. MergerFS could write to roughly two drives at a single time and Unraid was limited to one drive at a time when it comes to writing. 
The next test that I ran was a test to look at the amount of space that was available on each of the solutions. I would make it so that they all have the same drive configuration they used before, and then I just have a script that would write a one gigabyte file continuously until it was full and then stop there and tell me how many times it could write that file. They're all relatively similar showing that all of these solutions are pretty good at using a variety of different drive sizes. There is a little bit of a difference here, but some of that is due to kind of the minimum amount of free space and typically you shouldn't be failing a file system up until you have write errors. So I'd say for most applications, they're roughly the same when it comes to the amount of data you can store on it. Though it will vary with how your drive sizes are mixed and what combination of different drives you have. This is a combination of different drives I was using for my testing in my VMs. Before I end this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the parity write hole and how it affects all of these different solutions. The parity write hole mostly affects RAID 5 or single parity solutions. RAID 6 can be affected, but since it has a second parity, it's much less likely to be a problem because both parities have to have the issue for this to be a problem. So for example, let's take a look at these four drives and pretend they're in a RAID 5 or some other single parity setup. And we're gonna say for this example, these three have data and then this is my parity drive. And I wanna write a little bit of data, maybe just a couple of kilobytes to it. And I'm gonna write it to this drive right here. And that means I also have to update the parity. But since I'm not writing a ton of data, it's not gonna write all the data to multiple drives because it's not the full width of the stripe. It's just enough for this drive. So I'm gonna write it to this drive and then I need to see what the data is and then update my parity with the new data. And that works fine, but if I lose power before that parity drive can be updated, I have the correct data on all of these drives, but I have the parity for before I updated the data on this drive here. Which means that if this drive was to fail, for example, and I replace it with a new one, I'm going to get the wrong data when I read the parity. And the problem with this is existing data that might have been written a long time ago can be corrupted. And this is different than a lot of other issues involving power loss and data loss, because those typically only affect data that has been written recently. So like the last few seconds of data that might have just been in the cache. This parity write hole can affect data that's already been written and you weren't touching for a long period of time and was unrelated to what you've been doing due to how the stripes are laid out with parity. There's a couple of different solutions to solving this parity write hole problem. One solution that a lot of hardware RAID cards use is having a dedicated battery that keeps RAM powered so the data can't be lost. So if, if during a mid-write, it still knows what was happening, so when it gets turned back on, it can finish that operation and make sure all the data is in place correctly. MD also does something a little bit similar to this on Linux, but instead of having a hardware RAID card where you have a dedicated battery that's able to keep track of that because it's just a software solution, it has a little journal where it says, hey, I'm gonna update this parity now, and then once it's finished, it says, I've updated this data now. And if it ends up in a process where it fails mid-time, it's gonna see, hey, it was starting to work on it, but it hadn't said it's finished it. Let's double check that parity stripe and make sure everything sure is correct and aligned correctly and fix it the next time it turns on. BTRFS doesn't do this. It just ignores the issue. And if there's some sort of parity write hole problem, you lose data and there's other potential issues. And that's one of the big warnings on the BTRFS parity of why you shouldn't be using it. I believe Unraid is using the MD features of the journal, but I have no way to find out exactly how that is doing. SnapRate has this problem the worst because you have to manually run a sync after. And this can often be in multiple hours, where on these other file systems, it's likely within a few seconds that the parity is fully updated. So if SnapRate, if I was to update a file on this disk, now the parity is out of sync. And if this disk was to fail now, either I don't have parity for that other file that I lost, or it's the wrong parity and I'm gonna lose data. Either of which is not a good situation and is why SnapRate is not recommended for very rapidly changing files. The right hole would be a huge problem with SnapRate here. You can fix this by either adding more parity drives or running syncs more common so it's less likely that a drive fails and needs replacement when a sync has not been run yet. Storage spaces in Windows appears to do a good amount of checking to make sure the data has actually been written correctly on disk and the parity has been updated before returning that it's okay. And this is likely why the storage spaces parity performance is so poor because it's double checking to make sure that parity is correct before it says it's okay. Instead of just writing the data bits and updating the parity a little bit later where the write hole could happen. I hope this information on the parity write hole and how the different solutions handle it helps to explain why they have the compromises these systems have. And if you enjoyed this information and like this video I have, please leave a comment below if you have any opinions. 
and thanks for watching this video.